So it seems like the latest trend is that everybody's recording themselves getting terminated, then jumping over on TikTok and posting it and waiting for the world to react. I mean, in a lot of cases, some of these videos have gone really viral. And I wonder if that's the intention of the employee. And some people have brought up a very interesting question of, is it even legal to record yourself and the employer in the event that you get terminated or fired? Well, stick around because in this video, we're gonna answer the question of, is it legal to record your employer and should you do it? Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff, and today I wanna to tackle the age-old question, or at least the flavor of the month of whether or not you can record your employer, your human resource department, or your boss in the event that you're dealing with uh, termination, getting fired, et cetera. And probably the bigger question is, is, if you record it, should you go off onto TikTok or YouTube or wherever else and hit the upload button? And now, of course, with the rise of social media, HR departments have a dynamic that they probably never dealt with before. And I think that this is becoming a more prevailing trend where people vlog about their lives, they vlog about things that are going on in their workplace. And of course, one of the big things that happens in today's economy, especially in the job market is we're dealing with a lot of layoffs. So it's probably only a matter of time before people start to record themselves and then upload them to TikTok, etc. Now we've seen a rash of these types of videos dating back months. Some of them we have CEOs who have delivered these messages of layoffs that are impersonal, that are kind of one-way communications to the mass population. This is the second time in my career I'm doing this and I do not, do not want to do this. The last time I did it, I cried. Um, this time I hope to be stronger. But we are laying off about 15% of the company. And then we have some of the more one-on-one -on -one types of situations like we've seen in the most recent video that I uploaded. Thanks for meeting with me and Rosie. We finished our evaluations of 2023 performance. This is where you have not met Cloudflare expectations for performance. We've decided to part ways with you. Yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there. Unfortunately, you know, today will be uh, your last day with the organization. Due to the impact that this ruling has had on the business, um, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big impact. And at this time, we are unable to offer severance to any of the people impacted in this. Thanks, Joni. And while hitting that record button might seem very empowering at the time, is there a legal implication by doing so? And probably more importantly, uploading it to a social media site. Now, I want to preface this by saying that I am not an attorney, so none of this is construed as legal advice. This is just me sharing what I've learned as I've done my own research on this topic. And even though I have a global audience, I'm coming at this from the perspective of the United States. So make sure that you know what your rules, regulations, and laws are in the specific countries and jurisdictions that you live. But before we get into that, if you're interested in more career and job search related content directly from a corporate recruiter, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So let's cover the basics of recording the actual conversation. So the question is, is can an employee secretly record a coworker, a boss, human resources, or some other company official without their knowledge? And the answer is, is that it depends. And at the federal level, there is some protection there with the Wiretap Act, which was further amended by the Electronic Communications Privacy Act of 1986, which essentially permits recordings to take place as long as one person or one party consents. So essentially, you're one of two parties in a layoff call, you and human resources, so you can legally record it as long as you give yourself consent to be recorded. But not so fast because state law covering audio surveillance varies drastically. So in some states, only one party is needed to consent and hit that record button, but in many others, you need both parties or all parties that are on the call to consent to being recorded. So if you're in a state that is a one party consent state, you can hit the record button without anybody else being aware that they're being recorded and it's perfectly fine. But if you're in a two party or more consent state, then that means that everybody on the call needs to consent or be aware that they're being recorded. Most states, including the District of Columbia, only require one party consent. And here's a list of them for you to check out. But as I record this, there's 11 states that are two party consent. So if you're sitting in one of these jurisdictions or the other party is sitting in one of these jurisdictions, it's going to take precedence. Those states include California, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Montana, Nevada, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, and Washington State. If you don't see your state listed in one of these, just check your local jurisdiction to see what the rules and regulations are about this. Now, there's a lot of nuance about why you might want to record these, but if you break the rules for your jurisdiction or the party that's on the other end of the call, and you try to use it in a court of law, try to sue them for whatever reason, 
Oftentimes, you'll find that a court won't accept them. Furthermore, you could open yourself up to some liability for a company to come after you and personally sue you. And this would probably be especially true if there was some damage associated with it. In other words, a damage to reputation, etc. In other words, you could open yourself up to some liability there. Now, keep in mind, if you're recording a company meeting and it's not part of a layoff or a termination, you could find yourself on the wrong end of at-will employment. An employer could take exception to that and then move to use that as the reason why they terminated you. And there's a lot of case law around that. And that opens up a broader question of if it's for cause and whether or not that would impact your ability to claim unemployment. So in the long and short of it is, is that it might be legal. It's certainly a shade of gray, but more than likely you could get yourself into some hot water if the employer decides to pursue it. So my recommendation is, is you don't record these meetings. If you do decide that you want to record, I would make a disclaimer at the very beginning of the meeting stating your intention of recording the call. And if the parties involved stay on the call after the disclaimer, then it's implied consent. But it's certainly recommended as a CYA. You don't want to get caught off guard here. So that's basically it as far as the legal implications are concerned. But let's talk about your career prospects after you make this call. If you decide to record the video, then you go off to TikTok or some other place, you publish it, it goes mega viral. As you go to start applying for new jobs, you're kind of going to have a scarlet letter on your back. So the life that died with shame lives in death with glorious fame. Or at least the possibilities there if the employer checks your social media. And more and more companies are checking social media accounts of their employees because of this exact thing. And honestly, with more and more people doing this kind of thing, you can certainly expect employers to start to button down on this and become much more calculated with how they handle it. And here's the deal. If you're in a termination or a layoff meeting, you're not going to change the outcome no matter what you say or do. So you may as well just accept what's happening and move on. And if you really feel the need to discuss what happened, you can make your own video after the fact because they actually cannot stop you from doing that. Because in that case, there's no legal implications there. But think about the implications as you apply for new jobs. You may have some baggage that employers might be looking at and be a little apprehensive to move forward with, even though it might feel vindictive and great at the time. It may not be in your best interest to do it if you truly care about your career prospects. If you do find yourself in a panic and you feel like you need additional help, that's actually something that I specialize in. I've got a website called lifeafterlayoff.com. It's loaded with tips and tricks on how to get you back into the workforce as quickly as you can. And I offer some of my deepest and most intimate knowledge in the form of some training courses about how to write resumes, how to ace your interview processes, and how to truly network effectively so that you can land better quality positions more quickly. I encourage you to go and check those out. And if you're really struggling, I do offer some limited private one-on-one -on -one coaching you can check out. And also make sure that you sign up for my free weekly newsletter if you want tips, tricks, and insider perspective directly from a corporate recruiter on how to support you with your job search. Keep in mind, it's absolutely free. Hope to see you there. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.